Hello, students. Welcome all of you again in our uh, <coughs> unit number three of uh, compilers. <coughs> now, uh, from yesterday, we have started the discussion of unit number three. Uh, that is uh, our semantic analysis and the syntax directed translation. So, yesterday we have seen regarding the concept of uh, semantic analysis. Uh, then. Uh, what is the role of semantic analysis? Different kind of semantic errors that can be detected uh, when your compiler perform the activity in the semantic analysis. That is the third phase of our compiler. And whenever the programmer does the compilation, that time, uh, what exactly the role performed by the semantic analyzer uh, in the form of detection of different kind of semantic errors? And also, which are the different kind of semantic errors that also we have discussed? <clears throat> uh, how exactly it is happening, and what role that system programmer has to be performed when the compiler is getting designed? That all the things we have covered yesterday. So uh, today we will discuss the things related to the syntax directed translation, and which is uh, nothing but the one of the uh, methodology or the technique which help us to perform the semantic analysis practically. Uh, as we have discussed uh, in the previous lecture, the semantic analysis has to perform the role of uh, checking whether the sentences or the expression are semantically correct or not, means whether they are meaningful or not. And if it is not meaningful or if it is not semantically correct, then different kind of semantic errors get generated that you have seen. But uh, how these, how these, all these things uh, being get done by the semantic analyzer? So uh, technique behind that is the syntax directed translation. So how the semantic analyzer uh, check the whether sentence is uh, meaningful or not, whether it is a semantically correct or not. For that purpose, uh, there is a utilization of syntax directed translation. So in that, uh, how exactly it happens? That details we will see. So these are the points today we have to cover. So first we uh, do the introductory uh, discussion of the what exactly the syntax directed translation. And in that the uh, sub terms we have to discuss like annotated parse tree or the modified parse tree, which is also referred as a decorated parse tree also. Then in that uh, we have to discuss about the what exactly the attributes is. Then we see the SDD also. And uh, finally we see the syntax directed, directed translation with the example so that the your concepts will get clear. Now, <clears throat> if you see this part already we have covered this figure, you are very much aware. Uh, different phases in the compiler perform their roles like lexical analyzer generate the tokens, then it gives to the parser, parser, utilize that tokens and generate the parse tree. If the parse tree successfully get generated, then you can say that it is a your expression or sentence is syntactically correct, then it gives it to the semantic analyzer and then semantic analyzer check its meaningful or not. And how it is checked that we are going to discuss. Okay, so parser, uh, uh, if you see the background parser, in case of the parser or the syntax analyzer, we have seen uh, there is a like of context free grammar to check whether your input string uh, is uh, syntactically correct or not. Okay or to validate your input string. There is a utilization of context free grammar. And then your parser generated the output for the next phase of compiler. That is for the uh, semantic analyzer. And that output of the parser is nothing but, you know, it's a parse tree, or you can also call that uh, output of the parser as an abstract syntax tree, AST. Parse tree is also called as abstract syntax tree also. Okay. So uh, that is the output of the, our parser or the syntax analyzer, which is given as the input to the sem uh, semantic analyzer. 
now uh, semantic analysis has to be uh, performed its role that is checking the statement or sentence is meaningful or not whether it, uh, whether it is a semantically correct or not so to do that uh, there is a utilization of one particular uh, technique and that is nothing but our syntax directed translation so here i have mentioned to interleave the semantic analysis with the syntax analysis phase of compiler we use the syntax directed translation means whatever the input that semantic analyzer getting from the syntax analyzer processing that particular input and check whether that input which is received by the semantic analyzer whether it is a semantically correct or not or the input which is being received from the syntax analysis phase whether it is a meaningful or not so to that checking is done by the semantic analyzer with the help of the technique that is referred as a syntax directed translation so here you can also see these different things already we have discussed <clears throat> lexical analysis receive the input then it generate the token then syntax analyzer receive the tokens as the input then it generate the output as a parse tree and then semantic analyzer receive the input as a parse tree and generate the annotated parse tree and then uh, from that we uh, the compiler decide whether the sentences or the expressions are meaningful or not so that we have to discuss further <clears throat> now as we have discussed in uh, syntax directed translation or that is in in case of the semantic analyzer we get the input from the parser or syntax analyzer as a that input which we get that is called as a parse tree or it is also referred as a abstract parse tree or you can also call it as a abstract syntax tree also okay these may all the names are valid so this abstract syntax tree is get converted into the another kind of tree is that i told you okay this uh, input as abstract syntax tree which uh, being received by the semantic analyzer this is get converted into the uh, another tree okay in when the syntax directed translation is happening in semantic analysis and that another parse tree is referred as the decorated parse tree or annotated parse tree or modified parse tree so you should keep in mind the output generated by the semantic analyzer there can be these different names for that output like decorated parse tree or annotated parse tree or modified parse tree etc now these names indicate that whatever the input semantic analyzer receives that is the parse tree or the abstract syntax tree from the syntax analyzer semantic analysis does the some changes in that particular parse tree okay what the semantic analyzer does does some changes in that parse tree and then then generate some modified parse tree which is being also referred as a decorated parse tree or the annotated parse tree so you know if you see the syntax analyzer lecture we generate the parse tree or the abstract syntax tree or the abstract parse tree from the given grammar and what here we are discussing the semantic analyzer does some changes and then it generate the modified parse tree so if the semantic analyzer is generating the modified parse tree or the decorated parse tree definitely the grammar which is being utilized in the semantic analyzer and its technique as a syntax directed translation that grammar also get modified okay and then we'll get the modified parse okay let's see how this uh, happening so before that we should discuss about the what exactly mean by the annotated parse tree or the uh, what exactly mean by the decorated parse tree or modified parse tree now <sighs> so this is the our uh, uh, plain parse tree or the abstract syntax tree that we are getting as output of our syntax analyzer okay here you can see now what the what is then the annotated parse tree or the decorated parse tree or the modified parse tree okay that point you just uh, uh, try to understand here so whatever the uh, input uh, whatever the output from the syntax analyzer we are getting as a parse tree okay that output is attached with some extra information okay that particular abstract syntax tree as output is being attached with some extra information when when semantic analysis is getting that when syntax directed translation is happening and after attaching that extra information to this particular abstract syntax tree or the parse tree which is the output of syntax analyzer after attaching some extra information to this tree whatever tree we get that is called as a annotated parse tree or the decorated parse tree okay now what extra information whatever the extra information get attached that is being referred as a attributes okay 
so here i have mentioned every node of the abstract syntax tree is attached with some certain attribute so this is our abstract syntax tree and to this abstract syntax tree we attach some extra information we attach some more information that is in the form of what attributes means we attach some attributes to this parse tree okay that is the simple meaning of this now what do we mean by the attributes so attributes can be the number attributes can be a type attributes can be a symbol table reference attributes attributes can be a string so this kind of extra information we attach to this particular parse tree or the abstract syntax tree which we are getting from the syntax analyzer and after attaching that what kind of tree we get we get this kind of tree what you get we get this kind of tree okay so up to this only okay don't consider this so here you can see same tree is here and we have attached to each of these grammar symbol some some information we attach now for example here you can see e is there here we have attached to that e dot val now what is this 17 that we will further discuss don't think about this uh, don't worry about this anything just think about the attributes we have attached so here to this e we have at added here attribute dot val then to this also here we have attached the attribute as a dot val here only plenty is there here we have attached the, to that attribute dot val so everywhere we can you can see everywhere we have attached some extra information to the grammar symbol okay so after attaching this extra information to the previous tree that is our abstract syntax tree in the form of attributes whatever tree that is get form that tree is called as what the annotated parse tree or decorated parse tree or modified parse tree. okay now these attributes which we have attached here okay now as we have discussed the semantic analyzer has to uh, determine the meaning uh, whether the sentence is meaningful or not with the help of the syntax directed translation okay now after attaching this attribute this particular after uh, this particular annotated parse tree has to be traverse traverse in the sense each of the node of this parse tree has to be visited why it is need to be visited so that the value of this attribute can be get determined so here i have mentioned these attributes values are calculated by doing multiple traversing or by parsing over the abstract syntax so every node of this particular annotated parse tree has to be traversed so that we can get the value of these different attributes now this i value already mentioned now how this value come that i will explain you further you just keep in mind what is exactly mean by the annotated parse tree. so simple Thing you have to keep in mind: annotated parse tree is nothing but attaching some extra information in the form of attributes to the abstract syntax tree, and after that, whatever tree we get, that is called as an annotated parse. Okay, this is the example. Okay, so after getting uh, this particular annotated parse tree, now this annotated parse tree can be uh, traverse, traversing in the sense visiting the different node of parse tree. and after traversing this now traversing can be performed in the bottom of fashion traversing can be performed in the top down or bottom of fashion okay so why we need to do the traversing why we need to visit the every node of this parse tree so that every node of this parse tree must get some value so this 5 is a value okay this 3 is a value this 12 is a value okay so how it is come that we will discuss further here you you just keep in mind uh annotated parse tree okay now when we traverse this whole parse uh, annotated parse tree and try to assign the or try to calculate the value of each of these attributes e dot val t dot val so this particular process of traversing this annotated parse tree so this process of traversing this particular uh, what you can say decorated parse tree and attaching the and uh, calculating the value of each of these attributes that whole process is nothing but the called as what syntax directed translation okay that whole process is called as what the syntax directed translation okay so whatever these abstract syntax you we have get from the previous phase that is a syntax analyzer in semantic analyzer and in the technique of syntax directed translation what we do we attach the attribute to each of these particular grammar symbol okay we attach the attribute to each of these grammar symbol and after attaching the attribute we do the traversing of this tree we visit every node of this tree and why we visit the every node of this parse tree to get 
the value of this particular each attribute that you have attached here okay and this whole process is nothing but the called as what syntax directed transfer okay so traversing can be done in the top down fashion or it can be done in the bottom up fashion so i hope you have got the clear concept of what is the annotated parse and what is the uh, concept of syntax directed transfer annotated parse means attaching the extra information to the previously uh, uh, out previously out, uh, get previously whatever the output you are receiving from the syntax analyzer attaching the extra information to that syntax uh, attaching the extra information to that abstract syntax tree in the form of attributes that is called as a annotated parse tree so these are the attributes you have attached now these attributes are get attached with the help of the grammar that i will tell you and after getting the annotated parse tree when traversing of this parse tree is done visiting of every node is being done for what purpose to get the value of that attributes okay and that particular whole process is called as what the syntax directed translation okay now let's see the further details okay now <clears throat> here in detail uh, example you can see now if you want to get the uh, modified parse tree or the decorated parse tree or the annotated parse tree for that purpose first and it, uh, most important thing that has to be done is nothing but you need to perform the changes in the grammar also what you need to do changes in the grammar also so in that case also we have the definition of syntax directed translation you can see here in syntax directed translation along with the grammar as we have discussed previously along with the grammar we have to associate some informal notation and these informal notations are called as a semantic rules so as in the annotated parse tree you see we have attached some extra information to the each node of that particular now you know the using the grammar we uh, using the grammar the parse tree or the abstract syntax tree is generated okay so in the same case in the semantic analyzer in the syntax directed translation that original grammar has to uh, get modified and after modifying the original grammar we will get some new grammar okay and using that new grammar we have to generate the tree and that new generated tree is then referred as the abstract uh, that is referred as a annotated parse tree or the decorated parse tree or the modified parse tree and that is called as a syntax directed translation okay and after getting that annotated parse tree when we do the traversing and get the value of the different attribute that is being referred as a syntax directed translation so here you can see the detailed definition of the syntax directed translation in syntax directed translation along with the grammar we associate some information informal notation now this is your original grammar this is your original grammar so see here we try to uh, uh, clear this definition using this example in syntax directed translation along with the grammar we associate some informal notation so this is your original grammar now to this grammar we are going to associate some what we are going to associate some informal notation means we are going to associate some extra attributes some extra information okay and after attaching that information we get the new grammar okay now what is what there is a particular term form that there is a particular uh, name for that informal notations also these notations are being referred as what these notations are being referred as a semantic rules means to this original grammar we attach some informal notation so that informal notations are called as what semantic rules okay and after after associating some in, informal notation in the form the semantic rule whatever new grammar we get whatever new grammar we get that is being referred as a modified grammar oh, okay or that is being also referred as a decorated grammar and from this we can say the original grammar plus semantic rule that is called as a syntax directed translation what original grammar plus semantic rule that is being referred as a syntax directed translation okay let's see here so this is your original grammar first production we derive expression as expression plus term now the, to this production we attach some informal notation we attach some uh, semantic rules in the now how we are going to attach some informal notation over the semantic rules with the help of some attributes so to this e we associate the attributes dot val 
again to this we will associate the attribute dot val to this we we associate the attribute as a dot val so in the similar way to each production we associate some attributes and the name of the attribute is dot val okay so you can see here everywhere we are we have attached to the each word each of this production and each the and each of the grammar symbol of that production we have attached some attributes we have attached some uh, uh, some extra information and after attaching this extra information this production e derives e plus t this 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 particular uh, production becomes e dot val equal to e dot val plus t dot val now what do you mean by this meaning of this what if you want to evaluate the value of this e dot val then you have to utilize the rule as e dot val equal to e dot val plus t dot val so this is the semantic rule for this production this is the semantic rule for this production this is the semantic rule so for each of these production these are the their respective semantic rules so this semantic rules being also referred as a semantic action also the semantic rules are also referred as a semantic action also okay and these semantic rules or the semantic action helps the semantic analyzer to determine whether a particular sentence is meaningful or no now how it happens that we'll see in the example but you have to just keep in mind what what exactly is the uh, syntax directed translation grammar is so syntax directed translation grammar is nothing but original grammar plus some semantic rule that is nothing but the syntax directed translation grammar so here i have mentioned this is original grammar and this is nothing but the semantic rules so this whole part is nothing but the referred as what sdt grammar this whole part is referred as what the sdt or the sdt gram understood so this is the concept of syntax directed translation here i am making syntax direct translation along with grammar we associate some informal notation and these notation are referred as a semantic rules and this grammar plus semantic rule then that is being referred as a syntax directed translation so this particular from this from this we have to generate the new parse tree or the new abstract syntax tree and that new abstract syntax tree then will be referred as the annotated parse tree or the decorated parse tree okay so same things i have mentioned here in syntax directed translation every non terminal get one or more than one attribute so this is the grammar production it is this grammar production i am the non terminal e and t so each of these non terminal will get some attributes here attribute name is what dot val okay attribute names is what dot val val is not the value here dot val is the attribute name okay the value of this attribute is evaluated by the semantic rules associated with the production tree so each to which to with each of this production rule now after attaching the attributes this whole part become the one part, one semantic rule so here i have mentioned the so after attaching the attribute this whole part become the one semantic rule what semantic rule to evaluate the value of this e you have to you have to use the rule what e dot val plus t dot val so this is the rule to evaluate the value of this e so this is the rule to evaluate the value of this e to evaluate the value of this t dot val this is the rule you have to utilize understood so these are all the semantic rules so we, why, so what what is the use of this all semantic rules so all these semantic rules we are going to utilize to calculate the value of that particular attribute so here i have mentioned the value of this attribute is evaluated by the semantic rules associated with the production tree now using this semantic rules how we act, how we can uh, evaluate or calculate the value of particular attributes dot val that we will see in the example you have to just keep in mind these semantic rules or the semantic action for what purpose we are going to utilize this we are going to utilize to calculate the different to calculate the value of different attributes okay now what are the attributes here this e dot this dot val is nothing but the attributes okay so in the semantic rule attribute is what val and attribute may hold the any kind of thing like attribute can hold the string number memory location etc etc okay now uh let's see uh, some more details now up till if you see uh, up till the second phase of compiler that is the syntax analyzer we have only seen the grammar means this part up till now only we have seen okay 
and with that we have seen with the help of this grammar we have seen the how the parsing will be done with the help of this grammar we have generated the plain parts to the abstract syntax tree but in practice uh, in practically uh, when the compiler is getting designed along with this grammar we have to also provide some extra information we have to also provide some extra information that is in the form of some informal notation and this extra information is called as a semantic rules that you can see here these are the semantic rules so that particular grammar plus semantic rules becomes your syntax directed translation and with the help of this syntax directed translation we are going to check whether your sentence is uh, meaningful or not so syntax directed translation here this is the uh, general definition of syntax directed translation actual practically when you do the traversing and you get the value using the that particular annotated parse key that is referred as a syntax directed translation okay that will see in the example okay so in compiler design we are not just going to use the plain grammar like this along with this grammar we have to use some rules like this semantic rules we have to utilize with some attached information okay so that uh, we can get the uh, checking that whether your sentence is meaningful or not so how it is being get done we will see then uh, another concept is there that is also referred as the sdd syntax directed definition so this is the this particular modified grammar is also referred as a sdd so this is the syntax directed definition for the calculator okay now what exactly it is a so sdd that is the syntax directed definition is a context free grammar together with attributes and the rules okay so this is your context free grammar okay so when you associate it with some attributes and rule and whatever the grammar you get that is called as a sdd so this is your sdd this is your what syntax directed definition a sdd is context free grammar together with attributes and rules here you can see the attributes are uh, attributes are associated with each grammar symbol these are attributes okay and rules are associated with the production this is the production and rules are associated with this is what a dot val equal to a dot val plus p dot val that is the rule that is called as a semantic rule so this is nothing but the sdd okay syntax directed definition and this whole part is the sdt syntax directed translation okay so syntax directed definition is what Uh, context free grammar together with attributes and rules so attributes are associated with the each grammar symbol and rules are associated with this whole production rules is what here rule is what here a dot and equal to the a dot dot plus t dot val okay so this you should keep in mind this this also as we asked in the exam number of times syntax directed definition for the calculator why it is referred as a syntax directed definition for the calculator because here all the operations related with the cal calculator we are performing okay M multiplication addition like this okay now <clears throat> now with the example uh, whatever things we have discussed up till now in this lecture with the example all the things we will try to clear more in details now we have given the example evaluate okay evaluate the uh, given expression Okay, you will get the given expression that is uh, five plus three into four. Okay, how by using the given SDD by using the given syntax directed definition. So this is the syntax directed definition we have given. Okay, and perform the syntax directed translation and give the result. This is the example we have given. We have given the expression five plus three into four. and with the help of the given sdd syntax directed definition this is your syntax directed definition we have to perform the syntax directed translation and you have to provide the result okay now for this particular now up till now we have seen only this kind of things up to the second phase of compiler now this is the grammar now from this grammar and for this expression you can get the parse tree or the abstract syntax tree like this you can see here now what is this num num so this num is not this is this num num is nothing but the 5 this num is nothing but the 
and this num okay and this num is nothing but the four because here num is the token and this value five three four are nothing but its lexical values okay so up till the second phase only we can get this kind of things we can get only this kind of things as output of the syntax analyzer but now that is the limitation up to the limitation of the syntax analyzer syntax analyzer will only help you to check the syntax of this particular expression <coughs> okay now for this expression using this grammar if this tree can be get generated then we can say the syntax of this expression is correct understood but now my next question is what now we have to evaluate this expression means we have to find out what is the result of this expression now syntax analyzer will not give you the result of this expression syntax analyzer only give you what whether it is a syntactically correct or not that things will be provided by the syntax analyzer with the help of the generation of this parse tree or the abstract syntax tree to check whether it is a meaningful or not whether it is a semantically correct or not now when we will say it is a semantically correct when we will say it is a meaningful or not when we will get the result of this now if you plainly calculate this expression its result will be 70 its result will be what 70 now this 17 as a output of this expression will not be given by the syntax analyzer that is not the role of the syntax analyzer syntax analyzer role is what to to just check whether it is a syntactically correct or not by generating the parse to get this result as a 17 that is the work of our semantic analyzer and its technique syntax directed translate okay now if you get the 17 as a result then we can say this particular expression is a semantically correct understood and for that purpose we have to utilize this say, third phase of compiler that is the syntax directed translation okay and for that purpose we have to do the most of the changes in your original grammar this is your original grammar now what kind of changes we have to do in the original grammar and that all the changes and that all the whole process is then referred as what the syntax directed translation okay so what changes we have to do this is the original grammar now within this original grammar first thing we have to attach what we have to attach some attributes as a informal notation so to each of the grammar symbol we attach some attributes and after attaching the attributes we will get the semantic rule so in this way first step we have to perform we have to attach the attributes with each of these grammar products uh, okay production by attaching the attributes with each of the grammar symbol after attaching the attributes as a informal notation with each of the grammar symbol we will get the semantic rules like this understood so f derives the num so num is here the token and to that token we have to associate the uh, associate the attribute as a lex val okay now then we get this 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 here we have got this sdt now syntax directed definition why we calling it as a syntax directed definition because it is present with the attribute and with some rules okay the grammar with some attributes and rules this is the grammar this grammar with some attributes and rules after that it becomes what syntax directed definition with this grammar if you associate some attributes and rule whatever grammar we get that is called as a syntax directed definition okay understood syntax directed definition to the original grammar if you attach some attributes and after attaching the attributes you will get some semantic rules and after that what this after that this grammar becomes the syntax directed definition so grammar with the attributes and rules that is called as a syntax directed definition okay now so so after now as first thing you have to doing do the modification this uh, original grammar okay then using this now as you do the modification in the original grammar this same modification will be reflected in your parse tree also so from this from this grammar you can see from this grammar you will get this plain parse tree or the abstract syntax tree okay now you do the modification in the grammar that is called as a modified grammar or the decorated grammar or a, a, which you are uh, technical refer as a syntax directed definition so the same changes you have to do in the this original parse tree also by attaching the attributes so to each of these 
a grammar symbol we attach the attributes okay you can see here okay so each of these grammar symbol will be attached with some attribute so likewise you will get this kind of things okay this now don't now don't think about this value <clears throat> okay first think about the attaching the attributes here i will tell you how this value come there okay now now what is the expression we have given 5 plus 3 into 4 okay so num dot lex val so lex val is the uh, attributes we have associated with the num token okay now we have given this value so we associate the value with each of these token num value of this will be what 5 value of this will be what 3 and value of this will be what 4 understood so we'll now perform the traversing okay we'll start from the top okay we'll start from the top like this okay now for the better understanding let me do the modification in this tree only okay so uh, for understanding purpose i just write here lex val okay this is the now i don't write the value i just write the v here okay okay num dot lex val <coughs> num dot lex val f dot val like this now how these attributes you are going to write now with the help of the given expression you have to mention the attributes okay <clears throat> likewise so now next thing is what now we have to traverse the tree now how we will traverse the tree we will traverse the tree in the top down fashion left to right okay top down fashion left to right okay now we will start from the top left to right now here we have come num dot lex val now what is the value of lex val now from this expression we have to put the value of lex val as a 5 here okay then we go next now here you can see num can be reduced to f yes num can be reduced to num can be reduced to f and what is the semantic rule for that now if the num can be reduced to f we have to use the semantic rule like this num dot num dot lex val equal to the f value means whatever the value of this num dot lex val that will become the value of f dot val now what is the value of num dot lex val for you so value of dot value of f dot val also become the for you okay so here we have got the value of attribute f dot val here you have got the value of attribute f dot val from the attribute num dot lex val from the value of num dot lex val we have calculated or evaluated the value of f dot val how why using the semantic rule this semantic rule because grammar says num can be reduced to f and for this semantic rule is what num dot from that we get the semantic rule as what num dot lex val can be reduced to the f dot val means whatever the value of this num dot val can be assigned to the f dot val that is the reason here we assign the value of num dot lex val to the f dot val then we move forward we go on traversing so we reach to the this node so f dot val can be reduced to the t dot val yes f dot val here yeah, here if can be reduced to t yes so semantic rule is what f dot val can be reduced to t dot val so whatever the value of f dot val that will become the value of t dot val so here we will get the value of t dot val so accordingly we have done the thing here okay so accordingly we have done the thing here you can see num dot lex val value of that will become the value of f dot val if can be reduced to t so that is the reason the value of f dot val become the value of t dot val so can the now in this way we will go on traversing traversing in the sense we go on visiting each node so can the t is reduced to a now here here you can see can the t will be reduced to e yes t can be reduced to e so what is the semantic rule for that t dot val semantic rule for that is what t dot val can be reduced to the e dot val so t dot val equal to the e dot val means value of the t dot val value of the t dot val can become the value of e dot val here 
So that is the reason e dot will get the five. So likewise, we go on traversing like this, top down, left to right manner. Now here, when you come here, okay, like see here. After associating the value five here, then we go like this and we'll come here. Now num dot lex value. Now what is the value of this? Value of this is the three. That's why we'll put here three, and we'll go on traversing. Can num dot lex value reduce to the f dot value? Yes. So that is the reason. F dot value become three here. F can be reduced to t using the grammar and this particular semantic rules. Yes, f can be reduced to t. F can be reduced to t. F can be reduced to t. So f dot value equal to the t dot value. So here t dot value become three. Again we go on traversing like this. Again we come to here this point. Now this num dot lex value will be the four. So here we associate it and go on traversing. Okay. Again, in this way, this num dot val can be assigned to the f dot val using the grammar production rule, and f dot val can be associated to the t dot val because here we have the production f can be reduced to t, so f dot val equal to the t dot val. And now <coughs> here you can see the t dot val. Now this t dot val, you can see this t dot value we have got the twelve. How we have got it? See, now this t dot val into the f dot val. Now here we have these two nodes already we have seen. Now this is the root node for these two nodes. Okay, and can the reduction of t dot val into the f dot val can be done? Yes, t into f can be reduced to t. T into f can be reduced to t. That is the reason for what is the rule semantic rule for this? This one. You know to get the t dot val, you have to perform this thing. T dot val plus, uh, sorry, t into f. Here, here, here. It should be the into. Okay, here it should be the into. Okay. So if you want to get the value of this t dot val, then you have to do the multiplication of t dot val into the f dot val. Means multiplication of this t dot val and this f dot val. So if you do the multiplication, you will get the result as a twelve. That is the reason you have got here twelve. Then again, you go on this. Now you have reached to the our main root node. Now to, if you want to evaluate this e dot val. Here you have got the uh, uh, four, then this also four. Here you have got the twelve, and you are now how to evaluate this final root node? Now this final root node, you know how to evaluate this final root node? These nodes should be already visited, and this root node says this node can be evaluated by using these two nodes, e dot val plus t dot val. So using this rule. Using this grammar production and this semantic rule. If you want to get the value of e dot val, well, then you have to do what? You have to perform this e dot val well plus t dot val. Well. So you know the you know the value of e dot val well is five. You know the value of t dot val well is a twelve. So five plus twelve, seventeen. That is the reason you have to solve. So the point which you have discussed that we know this user should be seventeen. So by traversing this tree, you can see we are getting the result seventeen. Means it indicates what? This expression is semantically correct. Means it is the meaningful expression, and how we have determined it? We have determined it with the help of the syntax directed translation, which is the technique of semantic analysis. So, attaching the attributes to the each of this grammar symbol. Okay, attaching the attributes to the each of this grammar symbol, and then traversing this tree in the top down or the bottom up fashion. Traversing in the sense visiting this tree. In the top-down and the uh, bottom-up fashion, and getting the value of these attributes. Now here, initially we don't know the value of these attributes. When we do the traversing and apply the semantic rule, we have got the value of each of these attributes. Okay. Now, so the whole process, process of what? Attaching the attributes to the each of the grammar symbol, and then traversing this parse tree by visiting the each of node. In the top-down or bottom-up fashion, left-to-right manner, and getting the value of this attribute, that whole this whole process is then referred as what the syntax-directed translation. And using this whole process of syntax-directed translation, we can determine whether particular expression is a semantically correct or not, or whether particular expression is meaningful or not. That we are That we can determine using the syntax-directed translation. So here, after generating the parse tree, 
uh, that is annotated parse tree we perform the traversing top down left to right and while traversing now one point you have to keep in mind while when when you are traversing whenever there is a reduction whenever there is a reduction you have to go to the production and perform the action means what suppose you started traversing from this we come to here okay now from this uh, okay here you associate the value to the lex dot val as a 5 okay and you go to the next node now whenever there is a reduction means you have to see in the grammar whether num can be reduced to f yes num can be reduced to f so whenever so you are observing here reduction can be done so whenever there is a reduction so here is a reduction you have to go to the production means where you have to come to here and you have to perform the action which action you have to perform the whatever the action in the semantic rule so whatever the semantic rule that is also called as a semantic action so whenever there is a reduction suppose here is a reduction here is a reduction you have perform here is a reduction here is a reduction you have perform to evaluate the value so whenever you see the reduction you have to perform the respective action so here reduction is what num reduced to f that is the reason here you have to perform the this semantic rule or you have to perform the semantic action what what semantic action you have to perform num dot lex value can be assigned to the f dot value and that is the reason here you are writing the f dot value equal to 5 so this rule you should keep in mind whenever we are doing the traversing whenever there is a reduction you go to the production and perform the action so same thing we have done everywhere so after this you go to the next point f dot now when you go to the t you have to see whether f can be reduced to t yes so here is a reduction f can be reduced to t so you have to go to the production and you have to perform the action what action you have to perform you can assign the value of f dot val to the t dot val that is the reason t dot val got the 5 so everywhere you have to apply this kind of rules okay you have to see whether the reduction can be done likewise you have seen here so here this rule node we have visited this and then we come to this point okay now when you come to this point you have to see whether reduction can be done yes or no so t into f so what are the sub node of this t dot val t into f where t into f can be reduced to t yes t into f can be reduced to t so you have to go to this production and perform the action action of what t dot val plus f dot val that value will be assigned to the t dot val so this this particular trick you should keep in mind after generating the parse tree that is annotated parse tree perform the traversing from top down top down and left to right so from left to right we are going whenever there is a reduction go to the production and perform the action and accordingly you can do the traversing in this way and finally you can determine whether you can get the uh, value of this particular expression or not likewise every expression is get check in this way for every expression which is part of your source program for that every expression this kind of annotated parse tree decorated parse tree is generated and then on that syntax directed translation get performed traversing get performed and with the help of that the decision can be taken whether the particular expression or sentence is semantically correct or not or whether it is a meaningful or not so okay so that's it from this lecture uh, okay if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section we'll just go through the this lecture once again so that you can clear all the points okay thank you all of you